Beard hair is growing up my face. Oh. Okay, it's that time of year, ladies and germs. It's um, holiday season's upon us. Time to be locked in, spend lots of time with your family, and not talk to them. That's true. Let's watch documentaries about music. Music documentaries. It's, um, we watch a lot of um, music documentaries, it turns out. I didn't think we were that educated or sophisticated. We're probably not. But we like things with strings that make noise. We do. And, um, and sometimes we're not looking at them on the internet or playing them. We like to watch the movies. So That's we're going to jump right into it. These are some of our favorite documentaries that are out there. They go, they go all the way back from like 1970 to today. Um, treat yourself. I think almost all of these are really worth watching. But let's go right in. We got The Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew is awesome. Break it down for me, John. Uh, it was made, I believe, by the son of Tommy Tedesco, who was on The Wrecking Crew. Yes. Denny Tedesco. Of Tedesco fame, <laughs> of the gas stations, <laughs> the World of Warcraft. Totally league. not. Totally not. Okay. True. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, continue. So it's it's about this group of uh, studio session musicians in LA, and they sort of became like the go-to guys. All this music from like even stuff like the Monkees, the Birds, the Mamas and the Papas, the Beach Boys. It's all it's these guys playing on all that music, which is kind of. Because well, that is funny because most people aren't aware of this. Right, like, they, it's they true. think like, oh, there's a different band for each of these artists. This is just the same band that did everybody we just mentioned and more, and yeah. they're phenomenal. Wasn't their bass player a young female? I believe it was, and she's phenomenal too. She is. We're not going to give away all the spoilers here. Just watch the movie. It's really it's good. It's really good, and um, you'll love it. So we're gonna move on. This is oh, this one just came out. Ah, oh, this is a good one. The little band from Texas. This is on Netflix right now. If you have Netflix. Go watch it. Watch it even before the, the price increase happens in case you're signing off. <laughs> That's right. It's happening soon, or it's already happened if you're watching this video in December probably. And this one, it's not that long. It's, it's, it's pretty short. like an hour and 20 minutes yeah. or something, right? So. It, but it's really well done. If you like ZZ Top, or if you don't like ZZ Top, and you just want to watch a cool documentary about some dudes from Texas. I feel like it'll make you like ZZ Top more if you don't. Or and, if, you're, if you're on the fence. And, and uh, yeah, there's Could a lot of documentaries like that. Like, you know, right. if I'm on the fence... Um, <laughs> This can push me either way. Like, yeah, because like, certain bands, like, but ZZ Top, I've always liked. Yeah. And then, so when I saw this, I was like, whoa, they are as cool as I've always thought they were. It's the most I've ever heard the drummer talk. Well, yeah, like, he doesn't ever. Up. Yeah. He's it's great. Yeah, it's great. Um, and, like, you get to see, like, you know, the guitars, the cars, the life. Right. The sort of history of it. You see lots of pictures of them without the beards. Yep. But it's just, it's really well put together. It's fast, it's quick, it's easy, and it's just, it's awesome. Lots of magnetones. Lots of magnetones. We like magnetones. We do. And Straight. guitars. Now, this next one, 20 Feet from Stardom, that won the Academy Award in, I believe, 2013 for Best Documentary Film. There you go. It's, it's a spectacular film. It reminds me of the first one we talked about. It's, again, the unsung heroes. Right. This one is produced, like, off the hilt as far as gorgeous production levels. So this is about the background singers um, that have pretty much accompanied everyone from the Rolling Stones to Aretha Franklin to just these people you see, like from Eric Clapton, standing the, the three beautiful women. Right. It's always these three beautiful women um, with some of the best voices in show business. We're amazing. Yeah. But no one knows their names. Right. And, and just sort of looking at them behind the scenes and, you know, Bruce Springsteen talks about best is like, you know, it's a really short walk, but it's a long walk. You it's, know, com a it's a complicated walk. complicated walk. walk. Yeah. That was the exact... It's complicated walk. It's, you know, going from like, you know, the background singer to superstar. It's a, it's a transition that doesn't happen for most. And this is a really rare glimpse inside of how that sort of career works. And it's fascinating. Pretty awesome. It, it is awesome. I mean, so, it's really cool. The, the, the lady who sings on Give Me Shelter is in, is in there, obviously. She's a big part of it. Um, Really, really fascinating. Not it, to give too much away, but no, it is fascinating. And they, you know, the the Playboy exploits from it and everything, and it just the whole story is fast. It's this yeah. is well worth watching. Sign up, watch it tomorrow. Now this one, there you go. Speaking of, give me shelter. Yeah, speaking of, um, so give me shelter is a is a documentary about the Rolling Stones when they did a free concert back in the 70s, 1970, um, and in California that went horribly awry. Maybe the worst planning ever. <laughs> well, I mean, Woodstock's up on that, like as far as bad plan, but this one. What if we got the Hells Angels? <laughs> yes, yeah, so no spoilers here. Security. So there's a whole bunch of movie that leads up to this, up yeah. to the free concert. There's right. radio promotions, there's them recording in the studio, some. But it's all about the concert, Hells Angels, 
are hired for security with a bunch of hippies. Yeah. And this is sort of the end of the flower power time. Right. And so hippies and hell's angels, it's the convergence of this does not end well. I think there's three births and three deaths and a murder that happens in the front row of this concert. And it's caught on footage. The documentary is a bit slow to watch. Yeah. But um, it is it is worth just seeing that this was captured in our cinematic like history and watching the Stones kind of at their sort of apex. In a, in a yeah, way. I, I mean, they, say so. I say they're their peak even now in a strange way, but um, right, they they just they're immortal. So it's like Stones, they just but, are. They but, are. But, I mean, you see like you see like the the dirty, you know, like Keith Richards and like he's just rock star Keith, and then but then you see like how just some wrong decisions lead to tragic events yeah. in real life situations. And the soundtrack is amazing. Of course. Oh, the last waltz. I mean, this is one of the best musical documentaries. Like definitely. Like, and it's kind of odd, right? Because it's, you know, so much of it is just music. I mean, it's almost like just watching a concert, but you get some behind the scenes. And that's why I was like, we, we were sort it. of like, is this a documentary? Right. But it would be, a. Uh, I think it would be like criminal leave this off the list. Every small town, ours included, like I think that has a local theater, like has a yearly showing of this. And like everyone in town goes to it. Everyone like has a few too many drinks and they watch the same concert every year. Like what can be said about any other concert in the history that's, and like we have live at the film where like these great recordings of audio, but there's, when you have Martin Scorsese yeah. sit down and film you know, one of the greatest collaborative, like, musical moments, and him edit it. I mean, it makes, this is one of those things, like, if you didn't like the band, you will like the band. You will like the band. I feel like this is one of those things, there are a lot of people who only know the band through the last waltz. <laughs> That's which, okay. Which is okay, I mean, I mean but it's, it's just kind of funny. Like, but, but it's, God, you gotta, you got if you like music, you just gotta watch it. Well, and all the cameos, I mean, everyone who's anyone, like, sort of shows up, like, oh, yeah, let's just... And like I, the Clapton thing where he like, you know, breaks a string and then Robbie's sewing and it's, it's just, yeah. And like, it's just and great. Robbie's just so cool in this too. And then just in those little behind the scenes nuggets you were talking about, like I, I vividly remember just the part where they talk about how to like go to grocery stores and steal deli meat. <laughs> you know, when this is the band, like we've all like, up on grip, like these, you know, all these songs are iconic to American music right. history and world music history almost. Um, that it's just neat to see like, hey, these guys were stealing bologna. To make it by, and and Scorsese captures this, yeah, in brilliant awesome. fashion. And that leads us to another one. Of his. Uh, another one, a twofer. <laughs> I mean, we could. I mean, like you can't. Like this is, you know, the the greatest capturing of the great, perhaps the greatest music in the history of music, like rock and roll. You can I mean, make a good argument. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. And it's in a, an amazing time in history. That was almost disastrous, and a lot of these situations of it was not a great concert as far as the the living experience of it, the music, the music, and, and the the way it looks too. I mean, I just remember like watching as a child watching Jimi Hendrix perform at that Woodstock. By the way, do we ever say that oh, it was actually Woodstock? It's Woodstock. I assume it popped up. <laughs> It'll probably screen. pop up. <laughs> and then, um, just in case. The magic of movie editing has appeared. Yeah. Our own Scorsese took care of that for us. That's right. But um. No, but it's like that, that was one of those things, for like, you know, from seeing Carlos Santana and his magical SG, you know, just Jim, Jimi Hendrix, though, like, was the life changer for me. Yeah. And the Star Spangled Banner. Right. And, and he's playing in the daytime when he was supposed to play the night before, I think, and he was the highest paid a actor, I almost said musician in the world at the time. And what was he paid like $17,000 to play it? Like, and, and by the time he played, most of, like, a lot of people left. Crazy. Because it was a final day. But, like, it's been captured in cinematic history for us to have that. And, I mean, I can't go down the list. Like, it'll, it'll scroll through the screen of how many everyone played there. Everyone played there. And if you didn't play there, you regret it to this day still. Yeah. Because there are Seriously. a lot of artists that were like, oh, I turned it down or I just couldn't quite make it work. And it's like, bad. It's, um, yeah, it's because I think Richie Havens was one of the, he was one of the artists that played there too, and then he's played in our small little theater before he That's passed fun. a few That's years fun. back. Probably, I don't know if it was 10 years ago when that was. It was, it was longer than 10 years, I think. Um, but he, in this little 300 seat theater, a block away from our guitar shop here, and I was like, wow, I'm watching a Woodstock performer play with this awesome open tuning and this giant thumb and sing these songs that I watched <laughs> on this documentary. <laughs> so if you haven't seen Woodstock, just, just gotta watch it. We'll set aside a long chunk of time and prepare for a great documentary. 
One of my favorites. I've not seen this one. Running down a dream. Break it down. I mean, it's Tom Petty. You just get you get the full from hey we're kids in Florida to we're one of the biggest rock bands in the world. It's a fantastic look at at just you you get this like sense of the the spirit of the band. Do you know what I mean? If they're a a true band in the truest sense of the word, they. They're just like, come hell or high water, we're we're gonna make it, we're gonna do it. Well, they were kind of like the band in a weird way, I guess. Yeah. Like they they lived together, they suffered right. together, they and they rose and they didn't ever fall together. No, even when Tom did his solo records, right? I mean, it's just cool because you just feel like anything Tom Petty decides, I I will do this. He just he just goes and he does it. Um, just for fun's sake, can you tell me Tom Petty's band's name at first? Mud Crutch. So Tom Petty and the Mud Crutch? Or? Just Mud Crutch. No Tom Petty and just Mud Crutch. I'm sorry. It's been a change. Mud I mean, just so you didn't know that. I always thought it was Tom Petty and like the Florida Mud Suckers or something. <laughs> but you know, you get to see how they all meet each other, you know, when they sort of pick up Mike Campbell and, and, and Ben Montanch. And you, you see all these cool relationships. You get to see all the history of the band. Like, you know, there are times when they go out and they're playing, you know, basically with Bob Dylan, but they're also Bob Dylan's backup band. Oh. They work with Johnny Cash. There's times where they're all working with like Stevie Nicks. There's, there's, and it seems like yeah. they, from all I haven't seen this documentary, and I highly recommend. It. I'm gonna go watch this later. It's really good. Um, but they, they seem like a band that's in it for the love of music. They are, you know. And you even, you even go through the part where it's like Tom's doing his solo stuff, and it, you know, turns into sort of the traveling Wilburys, and those guys hang in there with him, and it's, you know, it's just really cool. And if you haven't seen our episode on Mike Campbell, go back and watch that watch. after you've seen this and watch this documentary. Exactly. But, but um, Mike Campbell's the guitar player with yes. Tom Petty, and he's. Phenomenal, and we think he's great. But anyway, true. a true story about a band being a wonderful, loving, caring band to make music. And then, <laughs> <laughs> maybe the opposite. You like how I segued that? <laughs> you did. I knew it was coming. So then we get to a history of the Eagles. Another one of my favorites, and I watched these around the same time. Okay. But and I've told you before, it's like they could not be more opposed. Because the Eagles, I mean, it's all about, hey, we're a business, you know, and you get the beginning. I mean, the beginning is really cool because you, you, you sort of hear about, you know, Henley and Fryer like living above Jackson Brown, right. listening to him write songs. Like this magical time. And of, they, like, right. California but then they're just history. like, okay, let's make money. We're cutthroat. We're ruthless. We're a business. Can I just diverge for a minute? So this makes me sad, like in the day and age we live in. Because well, I remember being a kid with no internet. Right. There was no way to know this stuff. You didn't. You're know. just like, oh, the Eagles. They wrote Hotel California and all right. these great songs and this great record. And you're like, it's amazing. Like, they must be best of buds. <laughs> they all that, love each. That's what I always thought. And then as you know, and the internet came about, and and you know, I mean, they probably I'm sure. I'm sure they did at some point, but it just makes me sad. But there's obviously some, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. But you compare, you watch the Tom Petty one, and then you watch this one, and you see like, okay, here's two totally different ways to to do it. Obviously, both worked out okay. Um, they, they, I mean, they but, definitely worked out okay. It's just, God, don't you want to enjoy the ride you're on? Yeah. It's like being on a roller coaster and just having a great time or being on a roller coaster where it's on fire and you know you're going to land in a pit <laughs> of lions. Get out. Right. At the end. I don't want that. But um, great documentary nonetheless. Yes. Watch the Very watch good. The rise. Ooh, Sound City. Sound City's a fun one. Um, so Sound City is about this famous studio where famous studio. everything was recorded. And this is... It, <sighs> yeah. Everything from like Nirvana to Rage Against the Machine to Tom Petty albums to I mean just like a, a different genre. Things. We're not talking like the '60s and stuff. We're talking like all the sort of we're new age, of, newer rock. Yeah, newer rock, the '90s, and right. like just all this great, all the great California sounds. Yep, wonderful. And it's Red sort Hot of Chili Peppers. And Dave Grohl did this movie, didn't he? He did. Well, he you know so he basically kind of saves the day in this one, right? Because don't spoil it. I won't spoil it. Don't spoil it. But but he, yeah. he well he saves the day by just making this movie. That's all we'll say. But um, it's just a neat. It's a, it's a movie about a bunch of bands, a great sound, and a board. An unlikely place to make music, the, but that lots of great music came from. Yes, and, um, and a lot of the bands that you might have as your heroes came out of this, and they are all spiritually connected and sonically connected. Yes. And it's just fascinating how a room, a board, and a small group of people can make that sound happen, which is also very thematic of some of the earlier documentaries we just talked about. Yeah. Watch it. It's good. Ooh, this might be my favorite. It's up there for me, too. And I don't know if it's my favorite because it's the best documentary. I don't think no. it was the best made documentary necessarily, but it's, God. The it's, history it's speaking of, though, is pretty amazing. So Muscle Shoals. Muscle Shoals. The, um, and just, just saying that. You don't have to say the Muscle Shoals, the documentary. Just Muscle Shoals. It's, this covers the one of the coolest American studios deep down south. 
where everyone <laughs> from Aretha Franklin to the Rolling Stones to Bob Dylan, everyone, everyone who's anyone, wanted to get that sound that we were making in the South in North America. The Swampers. The Swampers, is that? Yeah. And then they, and there was phone calls from like all over the world saying, we want those black musicians playing on it. <laughs> we're like, wow. And you see the pictures flashing right. across. <laughs> I mean, this is just Bubba, you know, from Alabama looking dudes. You know, it's just, it's, it's a, but the, their pocket that they made. One of the coolest part, part, and not to spoil too much, but one of the coolest parts in this one to me is they talk about, you know, the, the time, the history, when, when this is happening, when it's all blowing up. You know, there's lots of civil unrest, there's lots of all the civil rights stuff going on, but they were like, we would get in this room, and it didn't matter what color anybody was, and we were just all, we were just making music, we loved each other, and it was just perfect, you know, and, and I think and that's I mean, amazing. that's a big key of what we do at the shop here and on yeah. the Silly Channel. We're all about, like, you know, positive, and we love the idea, like, if more people played music, there'd be less problems in the world. Yes. This is like this small microcosm of how that happened in one of the most tumultuous times in American history. Yeah. You know, like this continues to resurface, but like right here, you see this like joy of making music with these these strange little dudes from this strange little town and this strange engineer and a strange owner in this small building. Yeah, didn't Black Keys do one of the records down there? So. Like one of their best records. You know, yeah, uh, it's it's this place. There's supposed to be something magic just in the whole area. And I mean, you still got guys like Jason Isbell coming out of there now. You know what I mean? There's just seems to be something. But it is, you know, uh, like just even, I mean, Nashville's got its thing, New York's got its thing, LA's got its thing, but there's, the there's, an, there's, an, there's an energy. There is, there's this weird cosmic energy that happens, like the Rory Borealis of music. Just in the documentary, just neat to see that. Most people don't get a glimpse of it. We should go to Muscle Shells. We should go to Muscle Shells. We should Shoals. go. We go go not, to Muscle Shells. Not now. Not right now. It's busy. But later. <laughs> later. later. <laughs> We're going to go to Muscle Shells. Okay, this is a newer one. Um, Dr. Dre and the Defiant. This is one I have not seen yet. Um, this one's like, it's got Jimmy and Dr. Dre, like two of the biggest. Um, kind of awesome. I mean, there's lots of clips flashing back, but it's just a fascinating story watching two stories start on you know opposite sides of the musical spectrum, and they intersect. Wow. And create a business and musical dynasty. Yeah. It's every you know it's everything from like you know some rock and roll and hip hop, but it becomes an empire. And I'm not going to give away too much, but like, you know, we all listen to those things called beats. Yeah. It's just fun to watch the formation of how, like, out of this musical empire and how, like, you know, you know, really hardcore, like from Snoop Dogg to Eminem to like some, some really important hip hop and rap moments, like a, a billion, multi billion dollar empire of business is created out of that by this collaborative, collaboration of artists, producers, and just talent. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of somewhat shocking. It's on HBO, I believe. Very cool. Um, and I mean, I can't really, it's, just, it's such a slick production, just the documentary itself, so highly recommend it. And Shangri-La, the final one. This is on Showtime, I believe. And we mentioned this one because it has, it's, it's Rick Rubin, and he has created some of the most iconic music that we all love. Yeah. He, I mean, he discovered the Beastie Boys, that's all I have to say. I don't want to say discovered, but like he's, <laughs> he put them out there. He put them out there. And yeah. So many. I mean, he's done everyone from Adele, Kanye, like Frank Ocean, everybody. Also, he's out, you know, in Malibu. But we really, we we were really thrilled with this because one of the guys that came from our world in this little shop here um, has worked with him. I won't say names because that's I can't, I can't do that apparently. But um, he, it's just neat, and he's in the documentary. I was gonna say you see him for a you second. You see him in, in the there, documentary right? yeah. on one of the boards for a little bit, and it's just um. Rick's, Rick's managed to create a this weird little, it's, it's like almost like the opposite of Muscle Shoals. It's like it's got the same level of energy, but so different. And it's, it's very Malibu, very California. He's right on the coast. There's a big trailer. People sleep there when they're recording. The engineers sleep there when they're recording. Um, and it's, it's just, it's strange how he, you can sort of see him as a conductor and you watch how, because he's not an engineer. He's a producer. He doesn't know how to work the boards really, wow. and like he, but he knows how to get that sound, how to tell you, and he'll help. He'll, he'll direct the artist and help write the parts and in ways that are very unexpected and and creates a little bit of magic. With I mean, I just call him a conductor with a really big beard. It's a good description. Um, yeah, but it's um, it's a fascinating documentary. I think that kind of wraps it up. I think that kind of wraps does it, it up. Does that wrap it up? For if us? you watch all of these, then you probably have to go see your family. I, that's a lot. I don't even know how many we just talked about. A lot. It was a lot. It was yeah. a lot. We we didn't count. We just threw them out. I mean, it's. <laughs> but these these are just. We we love them all. We yeah. love music. We're gonna have another one come out in our favorite music movies. So yes. if you have any ideas, suggestions on, especially on stuff we missed. Yes. 
Um, let us know. Like, there's some, and share it with our community out there. Like, all the casino crew, like everyone, you guys, us, we all read it, and you get lots of comments. And start the dialogue and find other because this is how we're gonna find new documentaries because we don't have friends. We don't want to talk to our families either. Outside <laughs> just... of, I mean, our families are pretty much live like upstairs or around the corner, and we just don't get out of this box. So help us find better things. Help us. Help us. Um, we're excited. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much. Hit like and subscribe. Make sure you click the bell so you don't miss videos in the future. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.